Today we're going to be installing a classic 1000 bed slide into the back of our Dodge Power Wagon. The bed slide comes in the box, partially assembled. You have to install the side rails still. It comes with instruction manual. And of course you can order the hardware kit that gives you all the loops for the tracks and the nut certs that we need to drill the bed for and install so we can attach it to the bed. So for the first step, um, once we unpackage the bed slide, we are going to take these end caps right here off the ends of the rails. These are down by the handle. And to take those off, we're going to use a 1 8 Allen wrench. Um, the, the bed slide instructions aren't very clear because it just says tools needed, Allen head wrench. It doesn't exactly tell you what size. It says they're quarter by 20 bolts or Allen head bolts which is basically the size of the bolt, the shank, and the thread pitch, which is here. But that doesn't tell you what size. So what I found is it's an eighth inch for the caps. And then the pieces that slide in, basically these brackets and these quarter by 20 bolts, that's going to be a 5 seconds Allen wrench. So we're at the handle side of the bed slide now. And these are the caps that we're going to be taking out right here. And again, this is an eighth inch Allen wrench. With the cap out, we're going to be using these blocks. These are the mounting blocks for the plates here. And you notice that they've got a dish or a cutout relief in the uh, one side of them, the other side's flat. The flat side is actually going to mount to the bracket like this. And the relief is there so as this is sliding down this track, it clears the Allen head bolts that are holding the bottom frame and the side, uh, the side rail together. So basically, if you put that in this way, goes in here like this you can see how it clears if we flip that around like this it's not going to clear so make sure when you put this together the relief goes down just like that And you just put one side in first, like that, put the other side in, and just like that. Once you've got your brackets installed on the side, and you put your tie-down hook loops in, um, you can basically put those wherever you want to. So you can put them both behind the bracket, one on either side, both in front, or you can even slide them in the side rails once you get those installed. Um, it's really just a matter of preference. But once those are all in, you take your, your cap again, you slide that back in there, then we're going to tighten that back down. Now, this is a set screw style um, fastener. So what you want to do with a set screw style fastener is you want to run it down, snug it, back it off till it's loose again, and then run it back down and just 
snug one more time. And what that does is it kind of sets a groove inside the aluminum channel and it prevents that from backing out and holds that uh, fixture in there uh, nice and tight so you don't have to worry about it popping out on you. All right, now on to the back. So at the back, we have these corner brackets and it's pretty much the exact same installation as the side brackets. However, you need to make sure that you have one of those uh, mounting plates or brackets already installed back here that you can thread into. Um, unfortunately, because it goes around a corner and it's two different rails, you can't um, pre-assemble this one and slide them back in. You could probably put one on and slide it down the back rail and then just kind of position the front one, which I'll probably end up doing. Um, but you, because of the angle, you can't do both of them. So procedure on this one's the exact same. Take our eighth, eighth inch Allen wrench here, take that loose, slide that out. There's going to be um, some plastic and debris in the, tr in the rails here. I've kind of been cleaning it out as I've been going. That's just from the manufacturing process. This alumin extruded aluminum like this, it usually comes wrapped. Um, and I'm sure it's probably also from cutting the, uh, the, the fiber board for the decking as well. No big deal. So what I'm going to do is I've already got one in on this side. I'm going to install one on the corner bracket here, like so. Same thing, just kind of thread this in till it's flush with the bottom. And then we'll slide this in. Bring that in, and then we need to line this one up. So I'm gonna use my Allen wrench and just kind of slide it in, get it about where it needs to be, stick it down the hole here, make sure everything's lined up. And then we're gonna hand thread this, or hand start this. You know, now that actually I'm looking at it here, before we put that on there, we should actually put this cap on first. Because we won't be able to get to it after. So I'm gonna put this back in, do the same thing I did with the front, use my eighth inch Allen wrench, I'm gonna run it down, snug it, back off till it's loose, and run it in one more time and snug. Okay, so that's set. Now we can install this Allen, Allen bolt. As you can see, this bracket right here completely covers that set screw. So don't be like me. Think ahead and just slide the bracket over, tighten that down, and then put that back on. Okay, so now that this bracket's installed, we're going to do the other side. And the other side requires a little bit more planning because you have to install this bar before you tighten everything up on this side. Um, so what we're going to do, or, or what I've already done, I should say, is I've done the exact same thing. I've removed the cap on the end. I slid one of the brackets in and I slid the other bracket in on that side obviously when I put that together. And we're going to open this one up. This is the shorter bar of the three. What we need to do with this now We need to take another bracket and we're going to slide it down this trough right here. And this is actually going to insert into this. We're going to have a screw coming in this side. We need another bracket here and then this plate over here is going to slide on like so. And you kind of have to assemble it all together. So we start by taking our bracket and our Allen head screw. Again, we're going to put this in where the flat side is facing up. And then you need to set this inside here, like so. Get our screw hole lined up. Just like that. Get that started. I'm just going to run this down to the heads, just kind of sitting off the end of the bracket here. That way it kind of holds it in place. Like that. All right. We're going to take another bracket. We're going to slide that in this end of the tube, like this. 
going to take our bracket, our corner bracket here, we're going to set that down. And before I worry about the bottom screws here, I'm going to get this top one in. Again, just center that hole up in the middle of the uh, opening here on the bracket. And start your Allen head screw. And I'm going to tighten this down to about the same. Just to where the head just touches the bracket. Just like that. Alright, so with that like that, there's actually some play. Loosen this one up just a little. These uh, screw holes are slotted, so there's, there's enough play here to allow me to adjust this where I need to. So then we're going to line up the brackets down the bottom here. Start these by hand. fingers here make sure that I'm flush on the outside edge here and I'm flush on the outside edge of this bracket here I'm going to tighten the, the bracket down to the uh, bed slide first and then I'll tighten this bar down to the bracket it's a little cumbersome getting in here with a regular allen head uh, wrench if you have one of those long extended allen wrens with a ball head on the end of it or even just a, uh, a flush cut allen um, it'd be a heck of a lot easier to get in here, but not everybody uses that or has one, so I figured I'd use this so you guys kind of have a sense of what it really takes to get in here with this. It would make it a lot easier to do it. Bedslide also recommends that you uh, do all of this with hand tools. Don't use a, a screw gun or an impact driver or anything like that because when you use that, if you don't have the force or the uh, clutch set right on the driver or the drill, it will actually deform the bottom of the aluminum channel here, um, which will create problems for you later on. It takes the structural in integrity out of that piece, and not only that, it makes it a pain in the butt to slide those um, blocks in and out when it's bent. So. This side is now hand tightened down. I'm going to hand tighten this side down here. Then we'll tighten down, the, we'll pull this up, tighten this rail down here, and then we'll move on to the sides. For the side rails, they're installed much like the back is. And I'm going to take our plastic off of here real quick. There's one thing you need to note. Alright, so on the side rails, you notice you have an open end right here, and then on the other end, you have another plug, just like you, or a cap, just like you do on the corners. That cap end is going to be towards the handle end of the truck bed. That way, if you ever want to install any accessories or anything like that, all you have to do is just take that out. You can get more um, D-ring tie downs or other brackets or their bin system. They all just slot into this and tie down, so at any point in time, you can, you can reinstall those or put those in. Now, this rail is going to butt into the corner piece down here, and it's going to sit on the inside of this bracket and screw in. Bedslide recommends that once you have this in here, that this bracket is going to sit about six inches from the end. So it'll be somewhere in that area where this will protrude past this bracket about six inches. Um, you don't necessarily have to install it right there, but that's what they recommend, I'm, I'm guessing, for load carrying capacity and being able to tie down to this rail, they probably figured out that's probably the sweet spot. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install two brackets in the open end down here. Because we'll have one for the corner and one for this side bracket here. And I'm going to drop this down. No, I'll have to bring it in from the end. Slide this in from the end here like this. 
And I'm going to put this one on first, so that way it kind of helps steady it while I'm doing the corner. You could start with the corner. Um, it really doesn't make that much of a difference, I'm sure. It's just kind of what I'm choosing to do. And again, like I said, I'm just kind of running that down where it's a little snug, but I can still slide the tube. And then I'm going to slide this down into the end down here. I'm going to seat it all the way in. I'm going to take another screw, and I'm going to line up my bracket down here and thread that in. Now when I tighten down on this corner end down here, you can see there's some play in this. I'm going to be pulling towards the back and I'm going to be pulling up. That way it's seated all the way up into this top corner here. And just snug those. You don't have to really crank down on these. You got to remember that these are plastic inserts. Um, with stainless steel bolts, so if you tighten these too much, you'll actually pull the threads right out of the plastic blocks. So, just have to be hand tight, nothing, nothing crazy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a tape measure quick, and we're going to measure six inches from the end of this to where this bracket position is at. I'm going to tighten uh, the bracket down to the upper rail first, and then I'll tighten it down to the bottom. And I'm going six inches off the base of the bracket. So basically from this edge here to this edge here. It's about six inches right there. And again, I'm gonna pull up on the bracket before I tighten it down. Just like that. And now that that's set, you can see I've got some wiggle back and forth here. I'm going to hold my finger right here, make sure this is flush with the outside rail, and then I'm going to tighten down the inside Allen, Allen screws. That's tight. You can move these wherever you need to or wherever you want them. Just thread them down. And those are your tie down points. You can buy more of those from bed slide. They are an accessory item. They do come with this uh, bed slide. Um, you get four of them, which is kind of nice. But if you want to have extras where you want to put them in this upper rail or the back rail um, and put a cargo net down over it, you could definitely do that. Nice thing about these tracks too is that they're actually kind of wide enough that you could get one of those plastic hooked uh, or the cargo racks with the plastic hooks. You can almost reach in there and kind of hook that. Um, but then you're also risking damaging the rail as well. So it just depends on how much you're tying down. So, all right. So I'll get the other side uh, installed here and then we'll give you guys a close up look of how everything looks when it's uh, put together. Okay. So there is the fully assembled bed slide. All the rails are installed. Now the only thing we have left is to install it in the truck. Okay, for the second phase of the install, we're going to be installing the bed slide into the bed of the truck. And to do that, you're going to need an assistant and you're going to pick up the entire bed slide assembly and you're going to set it in here. You're going to center it up in between the wheel wells with the tape measure, just making sure that they're even on both sides. And you're going to leave yourself an inch and a half spacing from the back bars 
to the front of the bed of the pickup truck. Once you have that set, you're going to pull the latch on the uh, bed slide lock release and you're going to slowly and carefully slide it backward until the um, holes in the frame are exposed. And at that point, what you're going to do is you're going to look for the holes that line up on the highest point of the bed. So not down here in the troughs, but up on these uh, load skids. And you're going to mark those uh, using a center punch. And then you're going to drill those out. I believe it says a half inch, half inch drill bit. Yep, using a half inch drill bit. I would probably start with a pilot drill bit first, um, whether it be an eighth inch or a quarter inch, just to get your pilot hole started so you, your half inch drill bit doesn't walk on you. And then um, drill it out with a half inch drill bit. We're going to treat the holes, so we're going to put some paint or some primer on it um, to make sure that we don't have any rust issues later on. And then after that, you're going to install these rib nuts. Now, the rib nuts are basically these. And you can see it's a sleeve with a built in washer on it, and it's got these reset relief cuts cut, um, um, basically machined or cut into the side of it. And what this does is as this bolt pulls up on this, this is going to mushroom out. It's going to expand out underneath the uh, decking of the bed, and it's going to basically be a, riv a rivet. Um, that's why they call them rib nuts. To install that, it comes with the tool. You're going to use the 5 16 bolts that come with it. This is a half inch drive on the top, and then the rib nut tool is a 9 16 drive or a hex on top of that. And if you notice that the tool has these serrations around it, those serrations are pointed towards the rib nut so that way as you tighten this up into place so this is installed on here serrations are down towards the rib nut you're going to have a wrench on top and another wrench right here and using the two wrenches you're going to hold one and turn the other and it's going to pull this up into place and mushroom it into the bed you don't have to go crazy with it you just need to make sure it's secure and that it doesn't have any side to side play um, and it's it's firmly mounted to the floor. If you go too far, you can pull the threads out of this, you can pull the threads out of the bolts, and then you're in a world of hurt. Um, so that's where we're going to do with that. But the first thing that we need to do is get the frame up into the truck. Okay, with the bed slide set up in the back of the truck, the first measurement we want to take is the back bar to the bed of the truck. And what I'm going to do is go off the raised rib on the bed here, and we want to have an inch and a half clearance. And I'm at about an inch and three quarter right there, and two inches right there. So it's going to have to come in and twist just a little bit. The other thing I want to look at is measure between the wheel wells. So I'm going to go to the wheel well to the side, about an inch and a half, and inch and a half. So really all i got to do is slide it forward just slightly and take another, a second measurement and we'll be set. And then we can slide it open and mark our holes for our rib nuts. Alright, so once you have your bed slide all squared up where you want it, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull the release handle for the, the brake and you're going to slowly and carefully pull this out without trying to move it. It's got enough weight to it that it pretty much stays where it needs to, um, but you just need to be careful. Now, I'm going to show you something here real quick. There is a detent about half it out right there. What I would recommend doing is hopping in there at this point in time and marking your two front holes for your rib nuts. The reason I say that is if I come the rest of the way out to expose the back part of the frame, where it locks, watch what happens. So it could potentially shift on you at this point in time while you're trying to climb into the truck to get to that point. So if you hold up on it, you could put a board underneath it or put some weight up at the front, it would hold it as well. But I would just say lock it off at the second or the first detent, which is about halfway out right there. Mark your front two holes. Um, if you have somebody that can assist you, have them release the latch again, and while you're in there holding down on the frame, slide it the rest of the way and lock it off from there. Um, otherwise, if you put something heavy on the front of the frame right now, 
it'll hold it down while you slide this the rest of the way out. With the frame installed in the truck, or the bedside slid into the truck and it uh, evenly spaced out, we're going to mark our holes. And basically what you're looking for is these slotted holes. We want to look for the raised portion and find out what it lines up with best. On my truck, I've actually got the whole thing spaced a little bit more biased to the passenger side, mainly because I have um, electrical hookups for a, a second battery to run in my bed here um, for our Snowmaster fridge. So I've actually got mine slid over to the side a little bit. Um, if I was going to install this per the instructions, it would be actually about a half an inch over, um, which would line this one up perfectly or this one up perfectly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to center punch this right here about the center line of that hole um, as far in as I can on this rail and we'll make our marks all the way around on all four corners and then we'll drill the uh, holes and prime them and install our rib nuts. So I'm going to start my pilot holes using an eighth inch drill bit and we look for our marks. Just like that. All right, now we've got all four holes drilled out to a half inch diameter. Um, we're ready to install the rib nuts, but before we do that, um, I would highly recommend priming that, that bare metal now. Um, you can use an etching primer that you get from an auto store. You can use Rust-Oleum if you want. One of the things that I've used over the years um, is, it's actually called Sika Primer 207. Um, it's a metal etching bonding primer. It's mainly used for um, automotive glass installs. Um, when you when you clean up like the frame around a windshield area before you bond that or glue that in with urethane um, You prime it with this. It's a very good primer. It's extremely durable um, And I know that once it dries and sets up it's never coming off again um, This is something that I've kind of stood by over the years and I, I still use to this day um, Typically it comes with like a cotton swab applicator. I've kind of run out of those so I'm just going to use a q-tip at this point in time um, but basically you just shake it up Take the cap off, go in there, swab everything out, make sure that you cover all the um, exposed metal, and then let this set up. And then once that sets up, we'll be uh, ready to put the rib nuts in and we won't ever have to worry about corrosion coming up to the bottom of our bed. To install the rib nut, we need a rib nut, 
one of the mounting bolts and the rib nut insulation tool. Remember the serrations go towards the rib nut like so. The hex head goes away from the rib nut and then you're going to take the bolt, slide it through. You're going to bottom that out on the rib nut insulation tool. We're going to set that down into the hole just like that. <clears throat> you're going to use a 9 16 wrench and you're going to counter hold the rib nut tool and then a half inch drive wrench or socket, or excuse me, half inch socket or um, wrench and then we're just going to start turning that down and as we do this it's going to pull that bottom piece up as you can see it kind of wiggles right now and it's going to get rid of that movement it's already starting to go away Right there, it's starting to get tight, so I'm going to give it just a little bit more. That's pretty snug right there. There's no movement. So now what we're going to do is take the bolt out. like that and our rib nut is installed and then we just got to do the other three so once you get the uh, bed slide back in again you put it back in probably the halfway position like we had it before right around here you'll crawl up to the front you'll tighten your bolts down after you get everything kind of centered where you want it tighten the front bolts down pull up the rest of the way you can tighten your back bolts down run it back in take your measurements to your side double check everything Everything looks good. You're ready for business. If you notice one other thing too, and you probably saw this on the uh, sales brochures and the sales videos on Bedslide's website and uh, YouTube channel, the bed slide will actually start to arc up when it gets to the end of the bed, and they do that on purpose. And I'll show you why. So you notice right there, it raised way up, and it's about you know chest level, mid mid level right now. Watch what happens when I jump up on top of it. See how it squats down just a little bit? This bed slide is rated for a thousand pounds. Obviously they make bed slides that take on more weight than that as well, so they'll probably have a little bit more of a elevation raise to them. But the reason they do that is when this thing is fully loaded, they don't want this frame to scrape your, uh, your coating or the paint off of your, um, your tailgate. So it's just another little extra thing they put in there to make sure that it doesn't deflect so much that it damages your truck. Pretty cool little design. So again, that's the installation of the bed slide uh, 1000 CL um, with the uh, side rails. If you guys have any questions about this, you can check out Bedside's website at bedside.com. Um, and if you have any questions for us, make sure you comment on the videos and we'll try to answer them for you. Hope you guys enjoyed. I, this is cool. Hold on. Can Mommy. we sleep on this? Mommy. Okay, that's as far as it comes. Mommy, right. we're going on a All ride? Right. Can you lock us in here, Diggs? No. no. Mommy, can we like, oh, hold up? Can, can you open the window for us? It sounds it's like raining. something is exploding while we're doing this. So now, camping gear is on this, and so is the can, fridge. Can we, just, we could just turn this into a bed.